You guys see this thing? This is the most ridiculous air cleaner I could find for a 4150. Uh, I'm, there's probably others out there, but dang, that thing looks ridiculous. So this is what we're gonna run. This is kind of my idea. Originally, I wanted two of these, but it's kind of came to life. What a crazy build. And it's down on the ground. We just finished putting the front end back together for hopefully the last time and put like a throttle return spring on it. Just a few little things kind of tidy everything up. So hopefully today we can head over to the dyno and put this thing on there. We just need to fire it up, back it out, check it out, make sure everything goes into gear, it shifts, everything works. And then we'll take it over there. Like I said, the tranny out of the Camaro, um, it had some issues before. So hopefully everything's good. I don't quite remember, but uh, we'll just play with it. And maybe it was just that it was mad because of the turbo stuff or whatever, but it probably might slip a little bit. I don't, I don't really know, um, but it has fresh fluid in it, fresh filter, all that. And we're going to uh, go ahead and check it all out. I did over the last few days, clean up the inside, got all the wiring tucked up. I still have some IO cables over there. Ended up purchasing a drive shaft. You guys can see it in there right now. So it's all in there. Put some fluid in the rear end. And I've got the bed cleared out and everything. So we're gonna, ready to go. So what do you guys think, before we go too far, how much power this thing's gonna make? I think stock, the four eights make like 290 horsepower or whatever to the crank. Uh, even with cam intake and all that, I'm thinking, you know, if it picks up 100, maybe 115 horsepower, maybe i don't the zoomies might hurt it because it doesn't have any back pressure so i i'm thinking you know if it at motor can make somewhere around the low fours and then to the wheels would be like 370 380 maybe 385 so i'm gonna go with 379 to the wheels is what my guess is gonna be on this alex what do you think i really couldn't tell you all honestly alex is alex just ready to see what it does so um hopefully everything we can go do that but go go down there right now i'll wait Go down to the bottom, go to the comments, type in a number. Just pop it in there, and we're going to find out later in this video, hopefully what it makes if everything goes well. But, uh, yep, so I think it's just time to pretty much fire this thing up, back it out, check it, and make sure everything is good to go. Yeah, that big pothole back there. Yeah. 
That's true. I'll pull it all the way back. And you just kind of go, you don't, don't go crazy. Just go ahead and get a little throttle up. All right. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's fun. So go ahead and put it in park. So you can't grab this and that at the same time. So once you're all the way up there, you push that forward and then push on this. Now that's reverse and now that neutral. There you go. All right. Now I'm good? Yep. Okay. Sweet. One ninety two just sitting here idling away. Seems like I can't right. hear a word anybody. Said. What? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. All the neighbors are out watching us right now. They're just peeking out, we'll just back up and then give it a little drive. Nice little truck here. Nice and easy. Just watch the big old pot all back there. Yep. <laughs> there you go. We need to get a shifter knob on that thing. Yeah. Go ahead and drive it. Just like drive it. You don't, realize that? Yeah, no, don't go full throttle. We haven't tuned it yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. He was wanting to go full throttle with it. He <laughs> said, We haven't tuned it yet. to kill this thing i just would rather have a good tune in it before we kill it no and then it's not just the tune issue so we did end up getting this right here so i picked up this usb to um can bus cable so i can hook it up to the computer and do a full tune that's still just running on the terminator setup from just basic settings but i got that so i can plug into the laptop plug into the uh terminator and do a full tune so we're going to head over get this thing loaded on the trailer real quick head over to the dyno shop get this thing set up, and then maybe do some tuning on this Terminator. Oh, this Let's see what this truck's gonna make. So what do you, what, how much power do you think it's gonna make? I don't know, nice 500. Hair. Hair's all over the place right now. <laughs> 500? <laughs> Not, no, I won't make 500. Oh, well. I'll okay. take your guess, that's a small guess. 350, 350. So loud, so ridiculous. What do you guys think? It's pretty fun that three months ago, I bought it. Now it's got a LS with zoomies on it. Ready to do burnout suit. All right, burnout truck is loaded up. We're gonna go ahead and get it strapped down. Had a little, a little bit of issue getting up the little thing. I think the tires are super low, so as soon as we touch it, like squish the tire and bounce the truck back. But. Uh, we don't need tires where we're going on the dyno, so that's a good thing, just the front's on it to set on, but uh, yeah, sounds pretty good. That's how we're going to roll probably all over the country to go do burnouts, but I'm debating on if I want the burnout truck to match the daily. I'm thinking white and then putting all the decals and everything all over it would be cool, so just a nice bright white. I think that paint's pretty cheap too. I'd like to do some other stuff, but white's just so simple and easy, and the door jam's already white in the truck, so it would make it real easy if I just painted it like that color white. And uh, so that's what I'm thinking about. Let me know what you guys think about the color and uh, we'll discuss it some more. Over here to the shop, oh, it's getting the ramps dropped down. We're gonna go ahead and get the truck unloaded. But first we need to get the dyno rolled out and kind of into position. Uh, I, I'd like to try to stick the front end of the truck actually outside so it's not just ridiculously loud all the time. But I don't know if I'm gonna be able to back it in. I probably can't with this drop off. And so if I thought on some super loud vehicles, I could pull up kind of like this and leave the front end out. I might look at it uh, and maybe put a pod here and there and then have the front of the truck kind of sitting outside so then it's blowing all the crap out.
All right, so the truck is all set up. Most of the exhaust is outside, but the other's kind of on the bridge of it, but this should work out. Got the fan outside, kind of set up a little different. That hub is pretty tight over here, but we're gonna go ahead and run it just like this. Should be, should be pretty decent. And I went ahead and got the uh, Terminator cable right here. So what you do on the Terminator X is you unplug out of the CAN bus the little dash they send you. Then you grab the cable that you purchase and it's got USB on one side and CAN bus on the other. So plug the CAN bus into the truck. USB goes into your tuning laptop and then this will give you full access to the Holly Terminator software. So I already tuned a few vehicles on Terminator X. So I already have the software, pull it up. I will go ahead and sync everything and pull the tune out that I have and then we will go through it real quick. So hopefully you guys can see this already. Right, got the USB plugged in. The CAN bus is now plugged into the main harness. And I'm going to go ahead and go download from ECU. And then it's going to pull the tune out of the terminator. I got to have the ignition on. It would help. And it should download everything. Maybe. The minimum software version to operate currently is 1.0, build 100, you are currently, so I need to upgrade your software um, and go to Holly and download the new software real quick. So that's all downloaded now, new software's opened up, it's download from ECU, it will download and pull the tune out of it, and then we'll go over everything. So now you can start going through here and looking at everything you got, base, fuel, and see, so it's all based on VE in here. Uh, so this is the VE table it kind of built for itself so far and the learn table from probably the last time I drove it and everything got up here near um, atmosphere 16.4 so I'm going to uh, look over everything and I'll show you guys what I come up so these are the parameters you put in on the handheld just idle cruise and wide open throttle air fuel target and it builds this for you or you can go to 2d table and then actually fill in what you want at what manifold pressure and what rpm you want it at so this is the importance of being able to have the cable and fully dial it in uh, the timing works real similar to that. You have simple, which is what you plug in, idle, cruise, wide open throttle, which this is what they came up with. And on, then I can go to 2D table, and now I can start manipulating everything for myself. Uh, and then you can just go down through here, rev limiters. So the initial rev limits at 7,000, that's fine. Cranking RPM, base timing, graph, rev limiters, which we'll hook up later for the two-step and everything. Launch retard if we wanted that in there. Uh, you can also convert this over to fuel, but I'm going to actually use this truck to teach myself the volumetric efficiency and play with that. Super simple, um, naturally aspirated combo, so you're not going into boost. So this is more or less how a normal table would look up here at zero or slightly above is your 105 map. Um, this being at the elevation we're at, we probably won't even hit that top cell. It'll probably be one of these two or three down. Uh, but if you had boost, you'd actually have a table that would be way above this. So this is your basic setup here in the Terminator. So I'm going to go ahead and go through these tables, kind of set what I want uh, without really knowing. I might just leave what they've already built because the truck was running decent. Look at the timing table, set that, and then start driving it and see what the learn table starts looking like. Here with the key on and online and everything, the little orange bubble is where the truck actually is sitting. At 83 kPa, that's correct for our um, altitude. Usually you'll see like 90, 95 if you're at like sea level. So somewhere between there is what most people see. And then you kind of just look at everything. But I'm looking, so really this, the way that this is set up, you're literally only gonna touch probably, I don't know, even if the thing pulls a lot of vacuum down to like maybe minus five, I'm not too sure, but I'm guessing that you'll only really touch these cells right through here. You'll pretty much never see this because the, engine will never pull this much map. Usually you have this big table like this because you'll have kind of your idle be here and then you run into boost, but I haven't done a lot of NA stuff with Holly and my own build, so that's what's kind of fun. Get to learn something a little different. So right now they have a setup at 18 degrees here, and then it rolls over to 20, 22, and then 24, and then wide open throttles around 26. Um, I'm, I mean, that seems pretty decent, especially being on E and stuff, so I, I might just leave their base tune in it, start dialing it in, and see what it likes and same with the uh same with the fuel so i'm gonna just kind of watch the learn table this is like it's adding 16 percent. So, so i say transfer learn to base and then say smooth it so you can see right here this is where it so it comes clear actually down in here to minus seven that's probably off throttle where it pulls a lot of vacuum through the engine so usually you'll come out have idle part throttle and then full throttle and then it'll carry out depending on your rpm um, I'm actually going to go ahead and set this up a little bit higher because it only goes to 7,000. I want it to go higher than that, so I need to adjust that. 
So this is after it's been transferred over, so you guys can see that kind of changes some stuff up. But I'm gonna go ahead and smooth this out a little bit more because apparently it wants a little bit more efficiency through here. And then um, we'll go from there. Also, I wanna come over, I'm gonna completely change it up because I want to come in here on your initial setup. You wanna come in and set up your um, fuel injectors. So I will do that real quick. System, ECU configuration, Terminator X, engine parameters, eight cylinders, 293 cubic inches, VE based. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on uh, gasoline, AFR, fuel prime. This is where you have all this stuff. So this is where I couldn't get to it, but I'm gonna leave it here, 60. So I'm actually gonna go custom, and then I'm gonna go ahead and go 80 pound injectors. So that's what's in it. And then 43, sequential, one millisecond. And then I have some data on my phone that I found on the internet. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug in injector data. So whenever you get injector data uh, for your injectors, you'll wanna plug that data into here. Basic IO, I have the fan temperatures, which we set in the handheld, but this is where you can come in and adjust it here. And then close loop learn. They have everything at 50%, 50%, 50%, which is gonna be close enough. And then this is where you can come in and start limiting everything. But these are the basic settings to let the truck learn. Uh, this is kinda how they set the Terminator X up, is just to learn all the time. And as long as you're within 50%, it'll sit there and correct for it. And then it looks like they actually have individual fuel correction on here. Well, I didn't think that was supposed to be part of the Terminator X. Maybe they added that. And then here's your input outputs. And this is like where I'll come in and set up some of the two-step and all of that. And, uh, or that's the base input outputs. But then base fuel, like we saw, I'm going to come in here and smooth some of this stuff out. See, it seems kind of weird at 115% efficiency. Usually an engine only ends up being like 105% efficient. But we'll, uh, we'll see what it, what it does here. And some of that could have been skewed from some other information that I put in, maybe. So, um, Otherwise, it's all your enrichments and everything, which I'm not going to mess with right now. That's all drivability type stuff. So, base tune is pretty much what the Terminator gave us. We'll make some pulls and kind of see where we're at. Just went ahead and idle in the car, just dial in the idle, giving it a little bit of ramp, kind of pulling it up to speed. And then I just let it build up the learn table. 4% off, 3% off, pretty close now. And then I just transfer it over to base, then you can go to your fuel base graph, and then uh, smooth it out. Start seeing where it's starting to pull some fuel out. This is the VE table here. So we'll go ahead and. Uh What's weird is I'm not, probably because it has no load against it, it's not going up towards the top. Um, but I need to check and make sure we don't have some sort of vacuum leak or something, but everything seemed good, but now it's now it's wanting to hang idle kind of weird. Okay, so we make 128 horsepower, so. I think I might have just too much, too much load on it. So we'll try down a load setting and see if it'll it'll rev up right here. Try right, starting a little bit higher, get past the converter on it. Best sounding 250 horsepower ever. Well, we'll take a look at the data and see what it shows. So click log again, save it as Bernie first, first pull, save. And then uh, we'll go ahead and open the data log and see what, see what we did there. So it finally made a good, good lick. I didn't want to rev it quite that high, but closed loop comp went way out so it was way off on fuel so that wasn't very good i should have should have pulled that a little bit softer but it finally started making some pulls so that was good so it went all the way to 7000 right there current learn up there yeah so i mean it, it was like 12.4 afr it's not bad I'm, I'm calling for it to be quite a bit richer um but changing the load on the dyno i think what happened is i got above 
uh, like starting at 3000 RPM, it's above the converter flash. If you're starting below that, it lugs the truck down and it can't get past the converter. Uh, so that's part of the problem with like dynoing automatics is you, you can fight the converter, especially on super loose converters. So that definitely helps. Now maybe I can go to the next higher load setting and just start higher. And it, it seemed to like that pretty good there. So we'll go ahead and try that again. And uh, so then I come over here, go to learn table. And then you can see here where it was adding all the fuel to it. Uh, transfer, and yes, because it's pretty early in the whole situation, smooth it. So now you see I got this big hump over here and all that. So I need to go ahead and add a bunch of fuel up here. I thought you really couldn't get above 100% VE. So I'm kind of curious if I have everything 100% set right. So now you guys can see after some smoothing, I got the table all laid out pretty good here. So I will go ahead and um, check a few other things and then just go ahead and make another pull, see if I'm closer uh, to where it should be, and then we can keep going. Yeah, 273 and 237 um, from the pool before, pulled a bunch of timing out and it actually didn't make much of a difference on the power. So um, 6,400 RPM, that's about right. So go ahead and keep playing with it, see what we can get out of this tune. So here's all our different runs. Here's the one where you can see where I revved it way out and it, at 6,600 RPM it made 275 horsepower. So not real spectacular out of a 4.8 not gonna lie but um well i'm gonna keep chipping away at it lean it out and everything uh maybe it'll make around 300 then i don't i don't know um also this cam's meant to rev at least that high so you can see it keeps making power until i let out of it way up here at 6600 um so i'm gonna go ahead and play with a few more things and we'll we'll try some more stuff and that's what's fun about having vehicles kind of like this like something different in a i haven't really played with a lot of stuff um, Terminator X, haven't played with that. VE, haven't played with that. I mean, I tuned one or two turbo cars in Terminator X, and but I switched the fuel value over to fueling, not to VE. So a whole different deal, which has me real weird because I'm at like 130% like VE, 140% VE, which shouldn't shouldn't be right, I don't think. So we're going to go ahead and set this up again, show you guys on the dyno. I ended up going like new run, uh, roll on. We figured out that it has 373 gears, and then I ended up doing this over RPM. So since the converter uh, is pretty loose and then gets tight around the like 35 maybe even 4,000 range I went ahead and left load on the dyno low until after 4,000 and then added load in and then it made a real nice clean pull up there this was actually even maybe a little high so maybe I'll only go like 18 percent and maybe go like 14 13 or 14 percent here um, just just adjust that just a little bit but it snapped through there pretty good everything seemed pretty happy on that one so and then 373 gears and we'll go ahead and make another rip on this thing. I ended up cleaning up the fuel a little bit, leaned it out actually a little bit, added a degree of timing, so we're at 27 up top. And we're gonna try some things. I, I don't really know. I think, to me, it sounds like 27 seems high. I don't know why it had so much in there. I mean, even on the trucks and everything, anything else I've tuned on normal gasoline is like 22-ish, 24. So actually, I'm gonna go back in there. I'm gonna drop it to what I know other LSs have liked in that 22 to 24 degree range. I'm gonna put it there and we're gonna try that first. And screw it and I put it in map, uh, speed density base so I can look at map and fueling and everything. And I'm gonna go through and look at everything on here. Um, you see it has a real weird wall now uh, on here. So I'm curious what's going on with this, um, but it just converted it and I, I've seen it where when it converts VE to fuel it's kind of weird anyway so I'm kind of going to start all over here make a few little pulls up and see what it starts doing to the learn table and it's just start dialing in a fuel graph like I like I know this is this is what I know is speed density better and if I start getting a weird map reading somewhere then I, I kind of understand where that's coming from too. All right, got everything fired up put it in speed density gonna make a pull here just real easy watch the uh, air fuels and see what it does. back up 
up. So it was starting to go lean through here, which I said it was kind of weird because the V had that big wall in the back. So I went ahead and made a small pull. As I saw that it was starting to go lean, I went ahead and got out of it, found out where it was starting to go lean, and then added a bunch of fuel up in this area, uh, smoothed it out, and now I'll do the same and try to work my way back up to that like 7,000 RPM range. I'm gonna go ahead and enable log, see if it works this time, pull up my view, and then I'll walk my air fuel as I make a pull. And it starts to go lean. So you guys can see at idle, it bounces real bad. But it's gonna be hard to dial in idle. Pretty much have to do that on your own because it's only pulling out a one header, it sees a rich and a lean every time the uh, cylinder kind of pushes air out of it. So. a bunch better it actually kind of ran clean up through here adding 12 percent kind of in that area where i already did it uh you guys could probably see that and then um transfer that over i gotta have my key on but um i can go ahead and pull open the data log as well oh there cleared it so 306 horsepower on that one and made nice clean it felt clean everything looked pretty good it was correcting quite a bit um but I mean, so it's starting to go lean. But so mid mid thirteens on that one is where their fuel is at. So I'm gonna richen it up definitely some more. That was it's quite a bit leaner, but it felt good. It felt crisp, but um, it's still just gonna add enough. So I'm gonna go back and add a bunch of fuel in it, and then we'll make another pull and dial it in. Um, this thing keeps keeps just fighting it. So download from ECU. Man, this thing is just keeps kind of crashing. I don't know why the why the software seems so clunky right now. But I'm going to go ahead and transfer this 12% over. Try to get that more into the uh, mid 12s. It looked okay, but then it, it apparently wasn't. So you're kind of getting some weird readings pulling out of the one pipe. I might end up putting like my air fuel off the dyno in another pipe, kind of maybe average them. Uh, kind of something first thing again learning because there's zoomies on the truck. the target air fuel ratio down a little bit more to make sure I'm getting into the correct target air fuel uh, shooting for that you know 12 3 12 5 on this setup and then gonna rev it out a little bit more 305 306 seems kind of consistent with where we're at but we will uh, get some more fuel in it and then maybe play with some timing uh, I don't know how much further I'm gonna take it here tonight on this I just want to get a good base I mean it's running great pulls right up to 7,000 so everything seems pretty happy Alrighty, so gonna make a couple more pulls, had to add some fuel into it. Truck's doing pretty good. It made like 306, 305, 303, 301. So I'm just playing with the numbers. Hopefully you guys can see that like the Terminator, even though it comes with base and self-learning, it's it's not exactly where you want it if you're actually trying to make power and really manipulate numbers and everything. Um, this setup, I think it would have had too much timing in it. And it was also, like you set your air fuel, so you guys gotta know what your air fuels are at, which maybe in another video I can go over like basic settings for a Terminator. Kinda did that when I first set it up, but different combos, different settings, and where I would start. But we're gonna make a couple more pulls on this thing, see if we can get the number back to that 307, 308. Maybe it's uh, getting tired, maybe we're wearing the rings out of this thing, I don't know. But we're gonna make a few more pulls, see if we can, maybe we can beat that 305, I don't know. 
but not not super super impressive i mean 305 horsepower you're probably talking oh you know what i'm thinking about it i don't have the weather station plugged into this so i bet that's giving me uncorrected numbers i'm gonna actually plug that in and let's see what happens Alex forgot his earplugs on that one. That's uh, when you forget them, you know you forgot them. 386 horsepower, 324 torque. See if I can get that for you guys. So apparently, the corrected numbers makes a huge difference, right? That it's actually pretty neat to see. So 301 um, on the pull before that, which I changed some stuff, so I might have made a little more, might have made a little less, but then also we plugged that in the corrected made 86 more horsepower corrected which from sea level to here depending on air which today i mean it's cool there's it's probably not terrible air it picked up 86 horsepower on like a bad day uh, mile high 5200 feet we're at like 4600 not density but um you usually lose about 100 horsepower on an na build so actually it shows right there about 86 horsepower difference 85 from sea level to here uh for the corrected from the dyno the corrected number to that so what a huge difference uh shows another 386 instead of 301 and 324 torque said 251. if you guys remember if we if we just jump back here a few hours i said that i think it would make right in the 380 range yeah and it did yeah so like i figured that's what the number was going to be I mean, just guess. I could have been way off, and at 301, I was like, man, I feel way off, And but corrected and everything. I mean, that's right, 290. I just did the math, 290, 100 off that, and lose some because of uh, driveline and all that. But right there, 386 horsepower. Not too freaking bad. So I'm going to play with a little bit more. Everything's starting to get dialed in nice and good. Had a little bit of a rough start, forgot some stuff. Uh, this is part of what sucks about like not tuning all the time. But I also don't really want to tune all the time. It'd be a bunch of headaches and a lot of issues. But I really enjoy it. And it's this kind of stuff that you're fighting through it. And then you, oh, that's not plugged in. That's why I was making such little horsepower. Oh, that wasn't quite right. Oh, there we go. And then you, you it, when you get it figured out and everything works great, new combo for our 13th pull on the truck on the dyno and everything's been going pretty solid. I mean, pretty happy with it really overall. So I think we'll do, uh, I'm going to look at the data log, just a few more little things, just kind of make sure everything looks good and then make one more pull i think we're going to call it a night uh it could always come back but also this truck doesn't need a tune-up that's going to be like the kill tune-up it needs a tune-up that for two minutes can just take a beating and not kill itself so we really actually are going to probably detune a little bit anyway or whatever i think on the e and the plugs and all that it really won't need to be uh but if it was on the ragged edge it could be but we're going to uh play a little bit more make a few, maybe one more pull and then time to get the heck out of here we started daylight started first thing this morning getting the truck ready and now we're we're making 386 horsepower we're already seeing a glimmer of light why not push it see how much closer <laughs> we can get the alex says send that thing so i'm gonna play with a little bit more uh i feel that the tune-up's actually fairly close but yeah i, I mean i might maybe now i'll play with some i'm gonna see what the air fuel is and figure out what i want to change and then make another pull and see if we can make some more power so now you can start seeing it as it starts getting dialed in. We're only like two to four percent off, which is really pretty good. And then you can go back into that learn table and take that 50 percent and knock it way down. Uh, once you want to lock it kind of down, maybe only leave 10 or 15 percent, maybe leave a little on the rich side. Everybody does a little bit different. It kind of depends on your combo and the safety features you have set up, but not that. So we're within a couple percent. So everything's getting dialed in from what I'm wanting it at. Um, that target air fuel is probably in the about 12, eight range. So that's pretty good uh i don't know i think i'm actually going to richen it up for safety and just i'm curious to see now uh what what it's going to do but i mean it definitely i know that it's liking it leaner so maybe i'll just leave it right there maybe we'll just throw a little timing at it and see if it picks up anything at a degree of timing but i also richen it up a little bit so i'm curious to see what it does i just i want to go one way with each and see if it just stays the same see if it picks up 
Uh, this is closer to where I think it maybe should be, but I, I'm, I'm sitting at like 25 degrees of timing right now and shooting for about 12.6 air to fuel. So that last one was 12.8, and if it loses power, then I know that this thing really actually does like to run a little bit leaner. Battle on. We'll look at the log and see what I want to change from there. So on that one, I ended up pulling about three degrees out of it and reaching up to 12.5 air fuel ratio. And it went from 383 down to 276, a far safer tune. And you're only giving up not even 10 horsepower. So I'm not trying to stretch it for that extra 10. I actually detuned it some, made slightly less horsepower, but it's uh, pretty happy. Actually, I saw a little pop out the, out the pipe. So it shows that it's not super lean. It's actually got a little extra unburnt fuel, which helps cool the cylinder. All right, since I can't leave anything alone, I went ahead and put the three degrees back in it, leaving the air fuel the same. Gonna add timing, and I'm curious to see what it makes, but then I'll probably pull it back out. Um, and then I'm only changing one thing at a time now, fuel or timing. I forgot that I had smoothing turned way up. Uh, that's kind of where they set it from the factory, but I've been doing a lot of research. A lot of people leave it on two or three. So if you go to three on smoothing, it made 399 and 398. If you go to two on smoothing, it made right at 400. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the smooth, actually everybody says to leave it on two as long as you have a nice smooth graph and everything's pulling good. So I'm gonna leave it right there. We'll see if it actually picks up from the 400 and then we can go back. Uh, so I'm actually gonna start running the, Everybody, it seems like that has these dynos runs them on like two or three on smoothing, uh, not four, and it smooth graph and everything. So I, I'm going to leave smoothing on like two and then um, make another pull. We'll see if it picks up from the last one, but it adjusts all the numbers throughout the whole night uh, if you change the smoothing rate. So, I mean, three, four horsepower is all that's really changing, but it's because it's it's not smoothing out as many of the uh, lines, but looks like it's making peak horsepower at 6675. So it's right before where I'm getting out of it. I might actually raise the rev limiter, just rev it out just a hair more and we'll see what it does. I could probably let it cool and it'd get a little better, a little better. I wonder, I know what we should do. What? Let's pull the air cleaner off. Let's see if it picks up horsepower and loses it. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna try to get that 400 on the, on the real deal here. Yeah, I just- Filter is off. We're gonna rip this thing one more time and see if we can make 400 without manipulating any of the numbers, even by a horsepower, but smooth too. So if I could get like 401, 402, I'd be happy because then even on the other smooth, it would actually make the uh, 400. But I'm gonna start running the dyno on two all the time. It doesn't make much of a difference, just a couple horsepower, but gonna let's rip it one more time. I'll put it back on the other timing and air fuel and uh, go from there. We did it, 402 horsepower. So thanks to pulling the air cleaner off, maybe that was one or two horsepower. I mean, it shows it's actually pretty efficient, but uh, you guys can see it right there. 402 horsepower and 337 foot-pounds of torque. Even though I played with the numbers a little bit, it still ended up making 402. Took the air cleaner off, took everything off. 26 degrees of timing, about 12.6 air to fuel. 
is where we ended up on this thing. I'm sure I could play with it more and probably, but now you're starting to like one to three horsepower between pulls and things, which I, again, I'll probably still, I'll probably go like 12, four, 12, five in the burnout, go from 26 degrees to 23 or four degrees. I mean, you're only giving up maybe, uh, you know, 15, 20 horsepower, but it's a lot um, less aggressive tune. And the GoPros are falling off the truck. The tuning laptop is about dead because I haven't had it plugged in. The truck now has, let's see how many pulls I ended up putting on this thing tonight. 19 pulls, which good f three of them were figuring everything out. Another good three or four of them were playing with the V table, which I'm curious to flip it back and kind of look at some of that stuff. I'll do some more on that for you guys later too. But I just, as soon as I go to speed density and start looking at fuel map, I know how it should track. I, it just dials in so much easier for me. Um, but I'm curious on that why I was at like almost 180% VE on this thing. So um, again, pretty cool. Had a bunch of fun. Learned a lot. Again, in a combo even. Learned that you can maybe gain a couple horsepower from taking off an air cleaner if you need to. But actually pretty impressive that it didn't lose a bunch. So what do you think, man? Three months, we built a truck. And it makes 400 horsepower. Yeah, it's not bad at all for what we got going. It's one last thing to do. That's a big burnout. Unfortunately, everything shut down, all the big areas. There's actually a burnout uh, pad kind of near me. Uh, so I need to hit them up and see what it's going to take or how soon we can get in there and do some practice burnouts. And so we can see what this thing can do. I'm guessing it's probably going to do some wheel hop and stuff like that. So then we can play with that. Uh, it definitely needs suspension. The suspension's all over in this truck. So I'd like to do some adjustable suspension. But I want to get it out. I want to try it. And then I want to change some stuff. So I'm learning along the way with what does what as we change it. Uh, not a lot of people have ever built burnout vehicles. So be one of those ones that learns it, figures out what shocks do on them, figure out just everything on them. So um, that's going to be it, guys. What a deal. Uh, I want to say huge thanks to like Texas Speed for the cam on this thing. Motion Race Works for like just helping with everything, all the bits, pieces, line, fueling, just everything. Uh, awesome job. And it also works out that I can get parts from where I work from and uh, just what a collab it's going to be with them being able to take this thing and their burnout regal to do events and doing burnouts together and rep in motion and then i'll have build tune race all over this thing and it's just going to be an amazing time so i appreciate everybody appreciate alex for helping me build this dang thing and uh on to the next thing with it so appreciate you guys watching i really hope you enjoyed the video i know it's kind of a mess to begin with but once i got everything smoothed out um a lot more dyno stuff coming i got multiple people wanting to get in on the dyno so i should have a lot of dyno videos coming now that the truck is done i'm going to concentrate on the dyno really learning it really getting good with it and also um playing and learning my tuning that's it everyone again i appreciate it so much thank you guys for watching hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video